Uh, welcome to another episode of Varsity House Podcast with your host, Sean Crawford. Um, this episode, we have my co-host, Carl Jones, um, and then we got two running backs from the Cleveland Browns. We got Nick Chubb, and then we got Demetric Felton. So we definitely got, I feel like we got to talk about uh, the bat and the boy wonder. <laughs> I need to, I feel like I need to know, I need to know where that came from. Uh, it's just a little inside joke. You know, um, I always say I'm Batman. It's this thing I've adopted uh, in college. That's all. I, my alter ego is Batman, whatever. And uh, Felt comes along like two years ago. <laughs> like one of my best friends on the team. You know, uh, so I'm say he's robbing. You know, yeah. it's, it's not. It's, it's not like offense. Like I ain't like, talking junk or anything. But I just feel like we just, we've been <laughs> hanging out lately, stuff like that. So bad need is robbing. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, I mean, yeah. So you just kind of mentioned Georgia, but coming in to Georgia as a as a freshman, you were behind Todd Gurley um, for a little bit till he got hurt, and then you kind of stepped in that role, pretty similar to what you did with the Browns. Yeah, came in as a rookie. You were back. You were a backup, and then as soon as you got an opportunity, you took off. What were the, uh, some of the things that you learned from Todd that kind of just like led you to the point to where it's like you came in as a backup so you kind of know what it's like to work and to wait for your opportunity and then kind of the same thing with the Browns yeah it's, it's actually interesting because I went to Georgia Todd Gurley was there Keith Marshall was there he was having a month he had a monster freshman season I don't know if you remember his name oh yeah number Sony, four yeah number yeah. four and then Sony Michelle was a five-star recruit and he he, he also committed to Georgia the same time I did so I was really fourth string going to the season behind all those guys and I mean, it had to work. Like you said, I had to kept, hold my head, my head down, just continue to work. I knew my time would come, and when it did, I had to take advantage of it. And mm -hmm. the first game I ever played in, I scored like a 50 yard touchdown. You know, I just had to, in that moment, I had to make something happen just to, you know, get a little spark or whatever. But yeah, Todd, I learned everything from Todd. I actually, I watched, I watched Todd closely. And if you, um, if you know anything about like football, like our, our, our running back stance, I kind of straight up. Yeah. I learned that from Todd Gurley. Okay. Like I kind of, I stole that from him. Like everything he did, I just really watched and I admired him. And he's a great, it was a great football player. He's a great person. He's really a great friend, like a brother to me. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, yeah, obviously he was older than you and kind of in the same position like y'all. You you, you've you you been here with the Browns for a little bit. Um, Demetri, you come in. So what, what are some things that, you, like you talked about, you learned a lot from Todd, what are the, some of those things that you carry with you that you've taught uh, Felton? Uh, <clears throat> probably the biggest thing is just how to work. Um, how to work and take advantage of, you know, when you get a chance to make a play, you got to make a play, which Demetri does. Uh, every time he gets a chance to touch the ball, he makes, you know, great plays. He scores touchdowns. He breaks tackles, and he's quick, and, you know, he's agile. So I think he does a great job of definitely taking advantage of whatever, you know, as asked of him. He can play running back. He can return. He can play uh, receiver. So he can pretty much do it all. So I think that's the biggest thing that I could tell him, just to do it all. And when you get a chance to make a play, you got to make a play. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What's, what are some – I know – I feel like the people on the outside think Nick is quiet. I mean, even even we thought he was quiet. Yeah. He, was, he was like, yo, Nick's coming on. I was like, is he going to talk? Yeah. But uh, – how, how, is he, how is he a leader in a locker room? Because, I mean, like, like I said, it's like... I would say, like, there's, there's always, like, different ways people can lead. You know, there's, whether it's uh, using your words or by your actions. I would say Nick is more of a leader by his actions. You know, you don't have to always be the rah-rah guy to be yelling around. So, like, that is just the way he carries himself and how he works, his worth ethic. Uh, always coming to work every day just to get something better. You know, and that's just the way he moves. And I feel like that by itself teaches a lot of people, you know, and so mm -hmm. that's how I think uh -huh. we move. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> are there some things because I mean, you, I feel like you two are completely different, like styles of backs to where it's like he may teach you some things like how to run between the tackles to where it's like you may teach him how to saw somebody up on a route. Um, do y'all do y'all find y'all just like self just like bouncing like ideas and bouncing like techniques and stuff off each other? I feel like it's, it's like a, like the way he said he watches Todd and stuff like that. That's how like, I'm always watching him. I'm always watching the different receivers. Like just being in two different position rooms, I'm able to pick from a lot of different styles right. of uh, playing. And I just try my best to add that to my game, whichever way I can. You like being in, uh, you like this, you like the uh, switch or the combination of doing running back and receiver? It, it can be like challenging at times, but like uh, I like it because I always want to be the type of player that wherever my team needs me, I can go and fill it in like, at all, at all, any given time. And so I don't mind it at all. And I, that's always the style of player I wanted to be. Right. I didn't want to be just like one position. I wanted to be able to do multiple things. So. 
I got you. Yeah, I mean, for like even in a crowded running back room, there's so much talent in that room. You talk about Kareem, you got you, um, you, and then some other guys as well. But how, like, what's it like being in that room where it's just so competitive? I mean, so you've been used to it at Georgia. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what, what's it been like just competing against each other, just in the room together? You, you just always got to be on, on your game. Every time you show up in that building, like, every day is an interview. You know, you always got to – you always got to show yourself and be on top of your game because if not, you know, another guy's going to step in. And so uh, it's, I feel like it's a good competitiveness that always keeps you on your toes and just ready to go. Yeah, you know. now, now, talking about that room, y'all all are unique in your own different ways. Five-star, you know, five-star recruit in Georgia, quieter guy for, for what we see. Uh, all-purpose guy, Kareem, hometown guy, Dernis Johnson, undrafted. You guys are all unique, though, but y'all bring something different to the table. Just how does that kind of mesh to see the product we see on Sundays? I think it meshes as well. I mean, just like you said, um, you know, you got me, the uh, small town kid from Georgia. And then you got Kareem, who's like complete opposite <laughs> of me. I mean, he's like the rah rah guy. He, you know, he's tall, he's loud, he's he's live. You know, um, I think it meshes as well. Just like kind of a, a great balance of you know me and Kareem, because Kareem is opposite of me, and I mean, Kareem can do some great things on the field too. I mean, he can catch the ball well. He runs hard. He pretty much do it all. And then you had the emergence of Dearness Johnson who kind of, you know, uh, made a name for himself last year. And then um, you got Phil. I mean, our, our, our running back room is crowded, but I, I, I think we enjoy it. It makes us better. You know, it's kind of like a friendly competition, especially in practice. I mean, we're all talking junk. We all, you know, trying to make good plays for each other, for the team. So I think overall, you know, we have a great room. Mm-hmm. You, like the, you like the idea or like the fact that you got to split time? Because, I mean, it, it was something that you're used to at Georgia, mm-hmm. especially like when you, even when you were coming on the scene and, um, seen as probably one of the best backs in the country, you had to split time with Sony. Um, and do you do you think like you just took like what you learned from that experience, like just mentally, just saying like, man, man, I want more carries, man, I want to do more, I want more opportunity. Towards like now, you come in, you got Kareem, um, and you got Dearness as well. So, what's what's it been like being able to split carries, and like, is that something that you like? Yeah, I do like it. It's something that I've become accustomed to because of playing with so many great running backs. Um, so in college, it started, you know, me and Sony kind of uh, shared the load. And now me and Kareem and Dearness and felt like it's just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like the position we play, you, you kind of have to do that. Uh, it keeps you fresh, uh, keeps you fresh mentally and physically for the most part. Because in the game, I know it's not just on me. Like, I ain't got to go out there and save the day. Like, I got other guys around me who can help. And, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like that's just more mentally, like, stress-free. You feel me? Yeah. Like, I ain't got to go out, like. My freshman year at Georgia, like, I had to go out there and get 30 carries, and I had to do this and do that, and I don't feel the need to do that anymore. What to talk about the uh, – I mean, you talk about, like, we, this, I think it's a good thing that the running back room is crowded, especially because sometimes y'all see eight in a box, or last year y'all saw eight in a box. Um, what's, what's it like going into a game to where it's like you're expecting to get eight in a box, but it's like this is like our offensive line and our running backs is the strength of our team, but we just got to just, like, keep, keep pounding. So what's, what's the mentality like for that? It's, it's a mindset. I mean, we're going to games knowing – we know we're going to run the ball, and they know we're going to run the ball. So it's just a mindset of, you know, who wants it more. And we take pride in running the ball. Our old linemen are, are great. Um, they do a great job. They're probably one of the hardest workers on the team as a unit. They're always in the weight room. They're always together. They're always trying to get better. And so uh, just, it's just a mindset we have as Cleveland Browns that we're going to run the ball, and we don't care if you know it or not. Mm-hmm. It's funny because I, I did one with uh, some, some friends on the Steelers, and, they were, and we were talking about the AFC North, and they're like a team that we hate to play. Or I was talking to Minka. And he was like, a team that always bring it is is the Browns. Mm-hmm. He's like, you gonna get you gonna get the same thing. You gonna get downhill running, uh, consistently. Like no matter if they up, no matter if they down, like they always gonna stick to who they are. Um, so obviously, you guys take pride in that. But where does um, where does that come from? Like d- during the week, like the mindset to where it's like like how do you get each other ready for the game? Um, I would just say like whenever we go into meetings and whenever we. Uh, come together at the start of the year like coach Kofansky lays out that like we are based off like the run you know and then off of that we'll have different plays you know that'll uh, complement it but you know that's who we are and it's what we do and so you know uh, every day during the week we always uh, emphasize that you know and just work to strengthen it and so I just feel like um, because we all know that we all come ready uh, just to work and get better at it. Mm-hmm. When y'all having those days where y'all going 200, 250 on the ground, 
do y'all feel the defense sometimes like giving up or like not you know trying as hard because as a former DB myself when them days where you can't stop the run yeah. them the longest days not just on the field but the next day in the film room just like when y'all out there do y'all know like oh yeah y'all, we got that number ain't nothing they can do about it it's definitely a shift of energy from the first quarter to like the fourth quarter uh, when you have a success running the ball because I mean I played defense in, in, in like high school it's like putting my own in for like tackling no more. You know, it's, it's a long game, so it's definitely a shift. Uh, you can tell when the, when the team is like just kind of broken and giving up. But I mean, sometimes the other way around. Sometimes they shut it down, and you got to find you know other answers. And it goes both ways. Mm-hmm. I mentioned the uh, AFC North a little bit. Obviously, tough games. Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty it's pretty much a toss up. I know you going into the season with pre like the preseason rankings, and um, I think the Browns are. It's probably first or second right now, according to the preseason, preseason rankings, as far as the division. Um, but we see, like, throughout the season, things happen and things change and, you know, rankings change and all that stuff. But um, being in a division like that, what's, what's, it, what's it like uh, just going into the season knowing you got to play these type of teams twice? <laughs> Whereas, like, you got to play the, the Ravens who are physical, you got to play the, the uh, Bengals who are physical, and then you got to play uh, the Steelers who are also physical. Um, so what's it like going, like knowing, like playing in that division, and then just how, like mentally in your mindset for those for those games? I feel like you go into like the game, like a division rivalry game. You know it's gonna be a dog fight. It's gonna be close, and uh, I mean we, we barely blow each other out. It's always right. like a field goal or one one or two points. And I think I think going to that week, you has gotta be focused. Gotta be your mind's gotta be ready to know you're going to a fight, and it's gonna be physical and. Um, gonna be a close game so you gotta find a way to finish you gotta find a way to win and like you said I mean the Steelers they actually do a great job stopping the run uh I think probably out of everybody in the division they're probably the toughest ones to run against for me so I, I always love playing them it's a great challenge you know just for us in general I think they've had they've had one up on us the last couple of years so I mean you know kudos to them and they've been doing a great a great job over there and they got some questions at quarterback so I guess I guess we'll see how it goes all right um Talk about a little bit, um, Felton, I know you just you, your second year now, but uh, as, as far as AFC North, are there, is there one team that you like, you mentioned the Steelers, but is there one team that you kind of just like hate going to play or necessarily like hate the environment, the fans, um, just like maybe even like the bus ride. I know you guys take a bus to the Steelers, so maybe even the bus ride of, to travel. What's that one team that you, that in the division that you just hate to play? I would definitely say the Ravens, like that, that atmosphere was just, <laughs> it, was, it was hectic, you know? Yeah. And so uh, I would say like going in every year to play them, like it's gonna be like some some type of beef <laughs> with <laughs> us yeah, and them and the fans and whatnot, definitely, so. Yeah, um, you do you, uh, I feel like I got up since you mentioned the Ravens, I gotta bring up Lamar. I mean, I know you guys are offensive players, but do you guys, uh, do you ever just like take a, a step and or you know like you 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 got to learn or get to get the uh, adjustments from your coaches and all that stuff on the sideline but like is there like a player um where you just like you gotta watch to where it's just like yo like I know like I know we got my I get my adjustments but it's like I want to see what this dude gonna do on the field like he he a freakish player uh, it's definitely Lamar I mean, yeah even on the sideline we're definitely watching because he's just electric I mean he's mm-hmm. He's just a playmaker. It's crazy what seeing him in person, just the moves he makes and how fast he is. And he can throw the ball just as good as anybody too. So it's definitely uh it's great watching him during the games. Like you kind of be a fan, but you're playing against him, so you really can't be. <laughs> right. He's just he's a very electric player. Yeah. He's definitely like for me, like it's crazy because this it's only I just had my first year and each game I'm meeting people that like I grew up watching. <laughs> yeah. And, like and it's it's crazy to me. Like I didn't think I would ever be in the same running back room is him or be able to learn from Jarvis and Odell last year. Like, there's just so many people you come in contact with in the league uh, that you grew up watching and are able to learn from and just be in awe of them for a second of what they did, you know? Yeah. What was it like being in the room with, I guess, two, like, vets like that, like Jarvis and Odell? I mean, as, like, Browns fans ourselves, like, you think of those guys and, you know, they, they box off it, so to speak. But what was yeah. it like as a rookie, first year in, learning from guys like that? Man, it was for me. It was it was amazing. Like just being able to watch them and learn from them. Like watching film on them every time I get home, trying to see like oh how they do that and whatnot, and just like learning how genuine and nice dudes they are, you know. So it was a great experience for me to be able to like be in the same presence as them, be on the same team as them. 
Was there anything, though, that, like, you didn't expect when you first met them? Like, you know, we all got preconceived notions when you see somebody from the outside, but when you actually meet them for the first time, it's different. Was there anything with, with either of those guys where you were like? Um, for me, it was just, like, how, like, inviting and, like, cool Odell was. Like, he was always, like, a great dude in the locker room and just a great person to me outside of football as well, you know. Uh, so that, that definitely surprised me and, like, something that uh, I appreciate from him. Is there a lot of, uh, I mean, obviously, I feel like the Browns were in the media a ton last year, um, good, and, good and bad. Is it, is it hard to um, ignore that stuff, especially when it's like y'all know it's not true, so it's just like why, like why do people even keep talking about this? I just feel like always when uh, things aren't going the way that people want, you know, our season didn't go how we wanted it last year, people are going to, Make things up, you know, or find, raise find, questions, some find, some, yeah. find someone to take the blame, you know. And at, at the end of the day, those are some things that you can't control. You know, mm -hmm. you can only worry about what you can do in the situation. And what all we can do is show up to work every day, work hard, and do our best to win games. And so that's all we try to worry about at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I guess I guess it's it's a good it's a good thing that the that the dog pound is 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 so faithful and so committed. But I guess, like, on that end, it's, it's, it could be a little annoying. But um, I know we talked about other atmospheres and things like that. Talk about the just the Browns a little bit. I know you came from UCLA to where it's like football may not be the, the first thing um, to fans out there or to, to students out there. Um, Georgia, we ended I uh, played at Notre Dame, so we ended up playing at Georgia uh, my fifth year. And it was crazy. I'm talking about they got the lights, it's sold out, it's hot whatever but so I know I know you know fans and like diehard fans like that so what's what was like the biggest difference for you coming from UCLA to the to the dog pound I feel like you said it like perfectly just how they are diehard fans for their team like I, I definitely didn't have that at UCLA uh, you know you have some brewing faithful but like nothing compared to how uh, the Browns fans treat their team and so being able to step into that and feel the love from the fans and everybody it was a great experience. Mm -hmm. Nick, is there uh, what, what what were some things that um, that led you to Georgia? Uh, I'm from Georgia, <laughs> so I mean for me it was, it was easy. I wanted to stay home. I wanted to play for you know my state and for uh, my friends and all the people that I knew that were Georgia fans. So I just wanted to stay close to home, about two hours away. Uh, I'm a big family guy, so I could see my family. You know, anytime I wanted to, that's the biggest thing for me to stay at home and playing for my state. Mm -hmm. You the the whole competition thing didn't bother you, towards like you had Keith, you had Ty, and then you also had Sony who uh, who committed as well. Uh, not really. I, I knew Ty. I knew Ty had one more year. I knew he was gonna go to the league, and I, I, at that time Keith was projected to go early too, but he ended up getting uh, hurting both his knees, so I kind of set him back. And so I figured to be I, I figured to be me and Sony running things for a little while, and. I think two years later is how it was. Me and Sony kind of uncharged. So I, I say it worked out how, how I thought it would. I, I didn't depend on Ty getting hurt that his my freshman year, but you know things happen. So mm -hmm. I went. Oh, go. Okay. No, I'm saying like, so you go from Georgia where you that boy, right? You set all a lot of records and y'all had a lot of success there, and then now you go to the Browns where, I mean, we all know Jim Brown is like mm -hmm. the, the beloved figure here, mm -hmm. you know. And, but just play the same position as well. Just talk about, I guess, the transition from being that guy at Georgia and then now stepping into big shoes yeah. under Jim Brown. Yeah, it was definitely um, – I didn't know much about Ohio at all. I thought Ohio was, like, Midwest. <laughs> it was like it's two states above Georgia. I didn't know it was that close. So it's, def it's still in the east, which blew my mind. I found that out. So I remember coming – I remember my first, our first team meeting, uh, Hugh Jackson was the head coach. The first thing he said was, the greatest Brown of all time is Jim Brown. First thing I learned when I got here. And so, I mean, I, obviously he was a running back too. So, I mean, I kind of felt that inside. So you know, I got to follow his footsteps. But for me, it took, it took a while because Carlos Hyde was ahead of me at the time. Duke Johnson was here too. So, I had to wait my turn, man. I think I played special teams for like <laughs> seven games out there getting punts blocked and missing tackles on kickoff, on kickoff and stuff. So, I, I did my time. I knew my time would come. And, and they ended up trading Carlos. And so, I mean, it was, it was on me. So I took advantage, like I said earlier, I took advantage of my, my time uh, of playing and I feel like I did okay, you know, as a, as a rookie. And I continue to grow and get better every year. Mm -hmm. Do you ever talk to Jim Brown? Like, he ever give you any advice at all? Or? Uh, nah, uh, maybe, maybe like my, my rookie year, it wasn't really anything like 
I can remember is just, you know, continue to work hard and stuff like that. But I've been there before. I mean, I was behind Herschel Walker in Georgia. That's what I'm saying, so yeah. It was it's kind of similar situations. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to touch on the you, – you mentioned Hugh Jackson, and it's like you've, you've been here, and you in your time, you've had four head coaches, four different head coaches. Um, what are some – like – what are some things that kind of stick out about Stefanski? And uh, you, you both can answer this, but like, what are some things that um, stick out about Stefanski's Stefansky, uh, that you guys like really mess with? I think the biggest thing about uh, Coach um, Stefanski is that he's just about work. Like, yeah. he not really with anything else. He want to come <clears> in the <throat> building. And he want to he want to uh, go to work. Like nothing nothing else. Like it's all about the work. He was tell your team, we're all about the work. That's that's his like biggest thing that he always says. And so. And that's just the biggest thing. Like he wants to come in, wants he wants to get better every day. He wants us to win games, and he wants you know us to have fun while doing it too. So I think that's just the biggest thing. He's just all about work. How about you? Yeah, I was you know just uh, coming off what he said. Like he's very particular about what he wants, you know, and getting the team better as uh, bringing us closer to each other, and you know also getting on the field and working every day. And so as long as we do those two things, he's happy. Mm-hmm. I gotta ask about Stump Mitchell, man. I see the beard, and I know like like the Browns faithful, they love like seeing uh, seeing what he brings to the table. Just talk about what he is as a coach and what he does for y'all. Yeah, Stump, that's my guy. I mean, I had Stump for uh, three years now. He's he's been he's been probably the longest coach on the on the staff. He's been there longest, so he's been there with us from the beginning since uh, Freddie Kitchens was our head coach. So yeah, I, I love I love Stump. He's he's a great coach, a great guy. He's taught me a lot. Um, he continues to teach me new things. I learned so much from him. He played in the NFL too, so he definitely has some, you know, some stuff he can teach us. And he's just great, a great guy to learn from. Yeah, he's, he's a great coach. Um, he always calls him my dad because even though when I, <laughs> <laughs> even though when I switch to the wide he receiver to room, he will like I'll I'll be running around do something a little wrong. He yelling from across the field like trying to correct me and stuff like that. <laughs> he he won't let me do nothing. <laughs> No. Without him saying something about he's, nah, he's a he's a great dude, like always has um expected a lot from me since I've been here and believed in me. And so having that in a coach is, you know, it's priceless. You know, someone that cares about you and really wants you to get better every day, like it's great to have and he, he teaches us a lot of new things every day. So he's a great dude, great coach. Mm-hmm. You mentioned your your dad a little bit. You grew up in a military family. Um, what was what was that like a little bit? Just I guess the whole structure and maybe you've moved around a little bit as well. But how how important were um, were they? And then like their 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 teachings, and then also how did that like correlate to football? Yeah, uh, you know I, I've, I have great parents. My my mom and my dad they always tell me get, you know be a good person to work hard. And they both came from rough backgrounds, but they didn't let that affect how they raised up their children, and they gave us a better life than uh, they had. And, you know, having that military structure, moving around a lot, I feel like you just made me be able to adapt things faster, uh, you know, be able to connect with different people in different places. And so I'm really, I'm, I'm proud of it, and I'm glad that I had that background. Um, and I was able to uh, explore different, you know, states and different areas i wouldn't have been able to go to hawaii and live there for a little bit mm-hmm. without being without my dad being in the military so i've had a great experience with it. did you uh were you playing football there or were you yeah that's either? where i started playing football i started playing football in hawaii and that was the year that because hawaii is not like no, known for being a good like uh place for football or right like good college but that was they went like undefeated man to like the sugar bowl at the time it was his quarterback, Colt Brennan, mm-hmm. and Devon Best. And though, like, I fell in love watching them. And so being able to see them one night just made me fall in love with football. And now I've been playing it ever since. So uh, great experiences there. Nick, talk about your uh, upbringing a little bit. Um, I mean, was it, was, was it pretty similar? Uh, I, I didn't move around that much. I, <clears throat> I was down in a uh, town called Cedartown, Georgia. That's where I was born and raised. Uh, my mom raised me, my brother and sister on her own. So uh, me and my brother always played football. We always loved it. He actually went to Air Force Academy and played football. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, we just always played it. Uh, I always wanted to go play college football, which we both achieved. And, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. We just always loved the game. Uh, you, you don't wear gloves, do you? 
Yeah, I do. You do? You I don't work? wear gloves when it rains. Oh, okay. Yeah. I feel. I feel like I was about to say maybe your maybe your upbringing, uh, like got led you to the point where it's like you don't need gloves. No <laughs> swag. Yeah, it's no like yeah. swag. He wears substance. a zenith. I hate his helmet. Yeah. So but those, right, I think that's supposed to be like the safest one, right? Or Thank you. When they got they one the CTE, one. I'm all right. <laughs> I'm mad at my Zena. Uh, no, nah, I mean, definitely. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy because it's, I mean, you can come from many different places. So it's like we, uh, we grew up together. We um, actually went to the same grade school. Then we went to the same high school uh, over like in Lakewood. So like 15 minutes from here, um, St. Ed's. It's the best high school in the state, maybe even the country. But country. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll talk about that another day but um, nah I mean it's, like I said it's interesting so it's it's, 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 it's it's funny because like we come from we come from there we were fortunate enough we went to uh, I went to Notre Dame he went to Syracuse we played ball um, ended up we ended up playing you uh, 2017 at, at Notre Dame yeah um, I think I feel like the, I don't I don't know the exact stats but I feel like y'all had like under 100 yards combined pro- like I did. Our defense was nice that year. We can look it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, nah, man. I mean, it's 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 cool. Obviously, being being able to have this conversation with y'all. But um, some some definitely some more things that we want to touch on is uh, what's the addition this this whole off season to the addition of uh, Deshaun Watson. Um, what's it what's it been like having him in the locker room? He's been real positive. You know, he's. Uh, trying to step up being the leader, take over the team, and, you know, just we're all trying to get used to each other, get acclimated with him in the offense and whatnot, and I feel like it's uh, going to be really good for us. So, you know, uh, just uh, we just working hard, trying to trying to get more wins, trying to get uh, more together as a team, and Deshaun has been doing nothing but good things so far. Um, as he's been there, so uh, we're we're glad to have him, and we're just excited for this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's been great. I mean, he's come in. He's a natural leader. Uh, he made he's uh, a definitely a special talent. I mean, he he's made some crazy throws already. And he's a great person to be around. I mean, he's cool. He's from Georgia too, so I kind of went through the recruiting recruiting process with him. I've known him for a while, and so yeah, it's great. It's great to finally be on the same team with him. Mm-hmm. Did you did you play him when he was at Clemson? Or I did my first game ever. Who won that one? We did, Georgia. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, he came in and made, like, a great throw. He wasn't starting at the time. Oh, okay. But he, like, came in and made, like, a touchdown pass. They took him back out. And we was like, all right, keep him out. Yeah. <laughs> Do us a favor. Um, it's uh, Talk about uh, being in Cleveland a little bit more to where it's like, how has this, how has this offseason been? Has it just been, like, kind of um, – have you taken it slow, I guess, with the new additions? Or is it just, like, everyone has, like – that memory of just last year not ending where you wanted to end, so it's just like ready to get back in the in the office and just go to work. Yeah, I feel like we're just all just, you know, we we aren't happy about what happened last year, but you know, we there's nothing we can do about that now except for try to get better each and every day. And so we're just trying to be where our feet are, you know, focus on the tasks we have at hand and just get better. Was it ever? Fr- no, nah, I want to ask you about this question. You talk, we talked about splitting carries and, you know, being for the team and all that type of stuff. But is that ever in the back of your head wanting to, like, get more carries when you see the potential where your stats could be? Because I know we all got, like, that competitor in us where mm-hmm. compare yourself against your peers and, and that type of stuff. Is that ever cross your mind of, man, if I got a couple more carries? Because you were still second in rushing, missing three games. So imagine if – Yeah, yeah. Does that ever cross your mind or is it like, no, always about the team? I can't say it don't cross my mind. But at the end of the day, it's about winning, you know. It's about – as long as we win, I'm okay with whatever. I cannot get the ball one time. I wouldn't say that. But I mean, <laughs> as long as we winning, you know, and uh, I play, I'm playing well with what I get, and I, I'm fine with it. Yeah, it's, it's funny that he answered that because I definitely got the stats right here. Um, you've never been named an all-pro, but you were first in yards per attempt, yards after contact per attempt, forced missed tackles, and explosive runs, 10-plus yards. So... I feel like with those type of stats, like it's it's crazy that you haven't been an All Pro yet. Especially like if you ask around the league, I'm sure a lot of defenders, even coaches and offensive players, will say like, "Yo, Nick Chubb's probably like top three running back in the league." Um, how how does that make you feel? Like does does that frustrate you at all? Uh, I mean, that's just um, it can be frustrating, of course. You know, I feel like I, I feel like I work extremely hard. I don't get noticed like I should, maybe, but. I feel like that, that's, what, that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me on the edge. That's what yeah. keeps me working. That's what makes me 
you know, who I am, you know, uh, not getting the credit, not, you know, having the hype. I like, I like kind of being in the back, in the shadows, and just working, in my mind, working hard on everybody, everybody no matter what. So I think, that, I think that's what keeps me, you know, keeps my edge, keeps, keeps my fight going, just not getting the um, attention everyone gets. So mm-hmm. I think I feel like it, it works for me. We talked. We I feel like we only talk about football, so I guess we can we can switch the conversation a little bit. What are some uh, being in this beautiful city of Cleveland? What are some things? What are some things y'all like to do uh, in y'all in y'all off time? It's definitely a Demetric question. <laughs> <laughs> we just like to I don't know go out to get some food. We're always, <laughs> at, we're always at Marble Room or Lago. I feel like that's get the top spot, Marble yeah. Room. Both spots. <laughs> No, sir. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you know him? Yeah, he yeah, it's one of our teammates. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's one of our teammates. You got to step in the podcast now. I don't think we got to ask your mic. <laughs> What's good? What's your What's name? Up, Jacob Phillips. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jacob Phillips, a lot better. You want to hop home, bro? We won't have a microphone for you, but you just have to like project your voice loud. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no pressure. You fly. You came in fly for a reason, so you got to go home. Damn. Uh, <laughs> I hear you. Uh, okay. You, so you, you don't want to get on, though? Mm-hmm. All right. But, nah. so we, <laughs> we talked about, uh, I mean, obviously off the field stuff. So, I mean, you said you like to, you mentioned, like, to go get food and all that stuff. Um, yeah. What are, what, are, what are some other, like, like video games or whatever, like, in your downtime that y'all like to oh, do? Oh, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach him how to be good at Warzone, because right now he's a liability. <laughs> There's no kills, no damage. He can't even stay alive so we can redeploy. So yeah. Like, I'm just, just trying to get him better at that. Um, yeah, we, we're all just trying to have fun, like, just like anybody else, you mm-hmm. know? Uh, this is the best time of the year for us. Yeah. I mean, we get weekends off. We get Thursday to Monday off, because it's called OTA, so... We, we pretty much out and about every weekend, hanging out, mm-hmm. chilling. Because when season comes, we pretty much shut all that down. Just, yeah, we might do something after a game Sunday, or it's pretty much it. So right, right now, it's, it's time to be outside, time to you know, show your face and things like that. But mm-hmm. sooner or later, we gotta slow it down a little bit. So, yeah. <laughs> Seasons, that's a long season. What's uh, what system y'all on? I'm on the <laughs> Xbox. Yeah, I'm tripping. I got a PS5. Uh, there we go. Every uh, I always say that everyone that was on PlayStation was because the live was free. It used to be free. You had to pay for it on Xbox. You ain't lying about that. That was two systems ago. <laughs> but that's the reason why y'all. Stuck I can't. With I feel like I can't go. I can't switch back to. So I started with. The, I feel like everybody started with PlayStation. Like if you started with the original Xbox, you're kind of weird. Yeah. I, I, it um, wasn't. It wasn't the original. It was a 360. All right. That's when I. Started that's with. when I switched over too. So I had the PlayStation and the PlayStation Two, and then I switched over to the 360. Yes. I don't really know why, but I did. And maybe they have different games or like better games or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then I feel like I now the controller is so different to where it's like. I see, I see whatever I, like I know like square or I know like X I know triangle I know all that stuff so it's hard to go back go, yeah. to to PlayStation for me because now I'm throwing I'm throwing interceptions because I'm throwing it to the wrong receiver. <laughs> yeah. Um, but nah, it's, it's definitely something that we did in our down. I had to put the game up though just because I played it too much during COVID. <laughs> I feel like I was because I was, I feel like I was I had my like I would work out and I would play and then I would or play football and then I would like go play the game. But now I feel like with COVID it was like. Workout, no, it was not. It was no games going on, and I yeah. like class was online for real. Mm. So it was just like workout, kind of be on class, and then just play the game till like three a.m. I, I feel like that was that was like how you were able to hang out like with your boys and whatnot, be for able sure. to talk yeah, to them yeah, and yeah. keep up with them, just yeah. being on the game. And whatnot. So, Y'all yeah. play Madden at all or no? I used to a lot. I don't play anymore. So you in the league, but don't want to play as your, your your own character or nothing? No, because they like he can't even make the same cut. Yeah. <laughs> And then we were, I was playing the other day. Like, I don't even fumble like that. Like, he, he made, like, a 30-yard run, and then he fumbles. So that's not me. Like, <laughs> he said he, like, it ain't yeah. 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 So, like, yeah, no, nah, I can't do it. It's fake. <laughs> you play Madden at all? I don't play Madden. The more I learned about football in real life, the more I sucked at Madden. Like, I was yeah. trying to be too realistic and play action and... 
It, it don't work like that. That's what I be thinking. I be thinking like, right, I'm gonna run the ball first, second down. Then I, then like third down, we run it in. We get the first down. It's like, all right, play action here, first down. They not nobody expect. bite. Nobody. Yeah, bite. nobody bite. <laughs> everybody ain't stepping up. That's <laughs> <laughs> nah, never yeah, way. Yeah, it's terrible. Like you can't. You definitely can't go into the game thinking, uh, thinking like you gonna actually like call it like a real game. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Not at all. Mm. <laughs> That's funny though. But um, dang, I, I, I mean, I, I love the topic that we on for sure now. So it's like. We, what are some, uh, some, I guess, some things where you, you, you get into it to where it's like you say you got to shut it down, but how, do, how does that, uh, how, do you, how do you juggle just the distractions um, since coming into the league? Because I'm sure it was, well, I'm sure LA, I'm sure it's probably a lot of distractions, but like Athens to where it's just like, it's just probably ball, school. How do you like manage the whole, um, the distractions of the, the city of Cleveland? To where it's like you got to do like marketing deals, you got to come on a Varsity House podcast. Thank you for doing that, though. Um, <laughs> just all these like all these things where it's like people like trying to like like pull you into in many different places. How do you uh, handle that stuff? Uh, I just feel like you gotta just be very. Uh, you you can't say yes to everything, you know. But you know, there's certain things that you're able to do and. Uh, like this, like, like you know, this is good yeah, yeah, for us. You know, let's say. You just gotta be smart about like the things that you're doing, and whatnot. Uh, not doing too much, and you always gotta have your goal in the back of your mind, you know. Yeah. And I feel like that's what keeps you uh, grounded and making sure that uh, you're doing the right things for yourself. Mm. Interesting. Or did you? Um, I guess growing up, did you like you said you moved around a lot, started football in Hawaii. Did you think you would? Uh, be in this position that you are in today? I mean, like, I definitely, like, it, it's hard, like, like, believing that when you're not in there, mm -hmm. you know, when you're not there. But, like, I always, this is always what I said I was going to do. I, I always said I wanted to go play college football, and then I want to go play football in the NFL. And I always believed it. Like, you, in order to get to something, you, you have to believe that in your heart, you know? And so I feel like just... Just always having that faith and belief in myself uh, is what got me here for sure. Mm. How about you? how about you? Did you do the whole like opening and like the Under Armour camps and all that? I did, uh, you uh, did? the Nike opening. Okay. Yeah, I did that. It was out in Oregon, so I got to go out there, uh, Beaverton, where Nike headquarters is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, pretty much the same thing. Uh, as a kid, I wanted to play football. I didn't know. I wouldn't say I wanted, to, I wanted to play, you know, just for fun. But in high school, you know, I realized I was a little faster than everybody. I was stronger than everybody. I realized I had a chance. So that, just, that's a little, just a little stronger. Yeah, yeah, that's a little stronger. You still might be stronger than everybody. <laughs> so I, that's, that's when it clicked for me. I had a great high school coach who kind of took me under his wing and kind of, kind of told me that I, I, could, I could make it. And mm -hmm. uh, we worked every day, every day. And I still go back home and train with him in the off season these days. So. I feel like once I realized I had a chance, I was all in. You know, I didn't have, might sound bad, I didn't have a plan B. Like, I knew what I wanted to do, and I put my mind to it, and I didn't. Mm -hmm. You talk about going back home to train. Is that where you'd be squatting 675 mm -hmm. and 700 yeah, pounds me, and stuff? Yeah, me and my little high school kids around me on some spotting me. So. <laughs> you probably got like five of them spotting you. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of them, but yes. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I enjoy going back home. I enjoy seeing my family. I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Going back to where it all started. That's that's where I train. Uh, I know my guy who's, who trains me. He's not gonna take it easy on me. He tell me all the time. I look slower. I look you know weaker. <laughs> try to get in my head and stuff like that. So, but I appreciate that. I appreciate him and everything he's done for me. I mean, he keeps me at my peak. So. Mm -hmm. Is there a max goal that you want to reach? Because I feel like for me squatting, it's like. Three thirty. I ain't going. To, I ain't going past that. There ain't no point in me squatting that much. So, is there a goal for you, or is it just like you just? It just depends on like how you feel. I would say squat. It's not really. It's not really a number I want to get to. I mean, uh, like it. It just keeps me on my edge. It keeps me knowing. I like. I like knowing that I'm stronger or as good as I was last year. Mm -hmm. So every year, I clean and squat. I max out. So clean. So squat. I did six seventy five. Most I ever did. I always did six fifty. Past four years, I always just stopped there. But this year, I was feeling a little, you know, a little eager, you know, a little hungry. Yeah. So I, I did 675. But cleans, I go up five pounds every year. My rookie, I did four or five. 
Now they're 410, 415. This year they're 425. I didn't video it. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it's just knowing that nobody else doing that kind of gives me the edge. Um, knowing that I'm stronger than I was last year. I, 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 I like, I like, you know. Yeah. I'm sure DB is seeing that shit too, to where it's like, <laughs> like he different. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't trying, trying to. to yeah. We're here in the alley. I'm anchor by you for sure. I'm trying to tackle in the face. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to tackle nobody. No All right. Chill, chill, chill. <laughs> we, play, we play DB. We play DB. So. <laughs> but when you see them numbers though, like what, what are your thoughts on that? You like, man, I'm trying to match his energy or you just like. Nah, yeah, that's what you like. I have no business. Are y'all partners in the weight room? I mean, we will live together. Like yeah, sometimes. if you come in the morning. I like to live after practice. <laughs> he likes to come in the morning. I'll like do back and forth. But um, no, but Kareem was definitely feeling some type of way after you after you saw <laughs> him squat that. He was like trying to squat a whole bunch the next day. I was like, oh, you saw Nick's video. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, that's funny as hell. Um, dang, we uh. What were we talking about? So talking we were talking about the squat. We were talking about how bro lifting 300, I mean, 3,000 pounds and shit. It's like cool. Man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, is, there, is that something to where it's just like, I was about to, or you kind of mentioned it, but I was going to say, like, is that something you do to where it's like, all right, like, nah, I'm good. Like, I'm ready to go now. Yeah. When I, when I, when I do that, like, I'm good. Like, I flew back to Cleveland the next day. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm ready. Like, yeah. I'm, ready for, I'm ready to be back. I'm ready. I hit all my, my marks, all my numbers. So I'm ready to be back. And I've been here ever since. I had to stay home until I could get those numbers right so that's 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 an interesting take because i feel like a lot of a lot of people go to like la miami maybe even dallas or certain places like train probably like those you know those flashy ones or whatever mm -hmm. but um you go back home and i feel like that's just like the the style of player you are to where it's just like you i feel like everything about you is just like your like your comes from like your foundation mm -hmm. comes from like your family comes from your home um, when you started playing football, both of y'all, to where it's like, I played, like growing up, I love running back. Like Reggie Bush was like my idol. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I got to play running back. <laughs> um, but then like high school, I, I, I got hit one time and I was like, yo, put me back at receiver. <laughs> I was like, I'm done with running back. But <clears throat> how, how do y'all like accept that position to where it's just like, you know, you got 11 people on the field, like coming at you every single play. Like what, what's that like? And y'all got some of the like, some of the biggest people, because you got like like a guy like Calais Campbell that y'all see twice a year. You got uh you got linebackers that's flying around the field running like four fours, four fives now. Mm -hmm. You got these safeties like like a like a Derwin James or like a bigger safety like that mm -hmm. coming downhill. What's what's it like playing against all those type of players? And it's just like you know every single play like you got to bring it. <laughs> that's a funny story. I remember I was out for um had a calf strain last year. And I, 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 it was a Broncos game, and I was like watching y'all play, like you mm -hmm. and the Ernest, and like I feel like y'all was getting hit so hard. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I've never, I never like been on the sideline watching the game, so I was like asking people, I was like, do I look, do I get that, do I get hit that hard when I'm playing? They're like, yeah. I'm like, but we really take a beating out there. Yeah, like, you do. It was so loud, and I was like, I don't want to play no more. It was like getting smacked out there, but I feel like that's just that's part of the game. I mean, I, I like, I like that. I like, I like the challenge of yeah. you know, it's just like the defense I don't know, it's just. It's a like a weird type of rush, like just once you get in that zone, yeah, it and is. just like just out there running, and you know every you're bringing everything you got. The other guy's doing it too, you know, and everybody has their goals and things that they're doing it for. And so I just feel like it's fun. Like, you got anything? Well, I guess talking about that, talking about getting smacked and like, damn, like my boy out there getting hit. <laughs> what is y'all welcome to the league moment where you was like, oh damn, I'm in the league now? Whether it be a good moment where you kind of exceeded your own expectations or something mm -hmm. where you got humbled real quick. It can be practice, preseason game, whatever, but you. For me, it was my first, it was my first play. <clears throat> it was a uh, weird preseason pre against the Jaguars. I'm on kickoff. I'm running down the field. Some dude just dumps me like mm -hmm. straight on the field. Thankfully it was a flag, but like that was definitely my like, <laughs> my welcome to the league moment. I was like, all right, like I gotta bring something to me every time I get on here. Cause if not, like, you know, I'm gonna get played, so. 100%, I think, yeah. I think special teams like welcomes everybody to the NFL. Yeah. Cause he in college, I mean, he played special teams, but people in like in the, in the league, they like live for special teams. <laughs> Man. Like, that's their job. That's how they feed their family. And you find out quick, like the guys who, like only play special teams because they they live they die for it and they 100 miles an hour on kickoff on punt and all that so I think for me I got a punt blocked like early on in the season my rookie year I kind of feel like I let the team down so that's kind of my my welcome to the NFL. 
That's funny because, like, even when I was with the Raiders last year, I feel like I was always the quickest dude. Or like, at, I, I was at Gunner in <laughs> practice one time, and it was like a one on. It was the, it was the vice. Mm -hmm. And like college, like I, I rarely saw the vice. Like some certain, t like LSU did the vice. They had a really good one. But like sometimes, like they just it was like one on one. Yeah, punter put it up there, forced a fair catch. But it's like in practice, like I'm sure y'all know, it's like they trying to see, like especially OTA's mini camp, like they trying to see people run, and like like it was brutal, like it was brutal to a point to where it's like I had to like, I had to cheat myself because I had to like grab, I went outside on the sideline, had to grab somebody, yeah. toss him off, grab his helmet, cheat <laughs> yeah. to it. But like nah, that that going against a vice is crazy. That gunner stuff is not fun. Man. It don't look it's fun. Not fun at all. <laughs> what was the uh? So we, now we're talking about the offseason. Did y'all hit the uh, Bahamas trip? Yeah. H how was that? It was great, man. I, I feel like it was just like, <laughs> it was fun to be with your, your teammates in a different environment and be able to have fun. You know, I feel like it definitely brought us closer as an offense and, you know, just being able to have fun with each other. Yeah, I don't think we slept. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me, me and Phil was always just hanging out. We stayed up so late every night. Yeah, it was fun, man. Yeah, we had a great time. Definitely a great bonding experience. You know, got to you know meet the son. You know, catch up from um, since the last time I've seen him. Uh, we got new players on the team. Amari Cooper, he was there. Um, mm -hmm. Jacoby Brissett, quarterback. Josh Dobbs. So it's it great to uh, kind of go out and um, be outside of Cleveland and not really, you know, feel like we was at work. Just kind of talking and catching up and getting to know everybody. That's it. How did how do those trips work, dude? It's just like one person just take it and, and like like it's on me, and yeah, I just pull up. Uh, for the most part, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's how it was. We just yeah, got on the he, he took plane. care of us. Yeah, he was like, "All right, it's on me," and he was like, "All right, I ain't saying no to that." So. Yeah, nah, you're right, <laughs> Nick. When you when you, when you, when your turn? Nah, nah, that's, that's a different type of money. Yeah, <laughs> talking two hundred thirty million guaranteed. And that's that's different. I, I'll do something for the running backs. I'll take care of the backs. I yeah. can't take care of the whole offense. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, who probably. Do something. One yeah. Day. Did they have like a uh, like a practice field and stuff out there, or like was y'all just doing mostly <clears throat> just like maybe individual work or like uh, like sand workouts or something like that? Uh, they had a field for us, but we ended up the second day we ended up going like kind of across the street and like a little sand, and we we had like walk through. It wasn't practice, it was like a okay. walk through. Yeah. So we did that. Don't. <laughs> Nah, you got to. It's, 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 you got to on varsity. I wasn't going to say that. You got to. He made that face because the second day <laughs> we were supposed to walk through, I didn't make it. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was too messed up. Yeah. <laughs> this man right here. Right? <clears throat> That's interesting, though. Like, I mean, I feel, I feel like y'all definitely got a good bond for sure. Uh, was the bat and the, and the boy wonder? Um, <laughs> we gotta we gotta get y'all some like some we we gotta come up with like a like a varsity house and then like a bat and then the boy wonder type of shirt or something like that and yeah, then we'll give, we'll give it to him. Yeah, it would be hard. And then maybe like a few a, a few special fans could get could get yeah. one or something yeah. like that. Make it like a limited edition type That'd thing. Be cool. Um, bef before we before we finish up, I always do a segment. I always do uh, like a one of none moment. So just like a memorable moment that was that just like stuck out to you that it could just be like one moment, whether it's like football, whether it be like family, kind of that's the shape to where you are today. Um, mine is I always I always talk about like football. I, I always used to mention like football to where it's like playing at Notre Dame, um, like forcing a fumble in a big game and then recovering it. And then also like um, playing against Texas, like having an interception and then returning it, uh, returning a, a a block kick for two points and all that stuff to tie the game up, send it overtime. But like recently, we were actually out in like Lakewood one time, and then someone came up to me and was like, "Are you like Sean Crawford?" And I was like, "Yeah." And it was he was like, "You do the, the Varsity House podcast?" And I was like, "Yeah." And that was like the first time that somebody like recognized me like outside of sports, and it was, which was dope because it was like it it, it kind of like made me like realize that like people are paying attention, like people like mess with the content. So like I feel like ever since then like. Ever, ever since then, I like I always or now it is like all right, like I'm like I'm f I'm full of steam and like into this. To where it's like I'm gonna like I'm gonna put like all I can. I'm mm -hmm. try to get different guests and things like that. To where it's like people really mess with the content. Um, so I I would say like that's like my new one of none moment. Um, but I definitely want to hear y'all's for sure. Yeah, that's what's up. No, just for me, <clears throat> keep it quick. Um, played my four years at uh, <coughs> Syracuse and 
wasn't as highly tolerated as y'all. So like, you know, they went through the whole little pre-draft, you know, all that type of stuff. And that was the COVID year. So, you know, that day, that draft day come and even though in the back of your head, you know, you ain't getting picked, but it still hurt like your whole life, right? You know that um, you hope that this day comes, you see it on TV all the time and it didn't happen. But then for me, it was kind of a switch because my pops told me, he was like, look, your whole life, you've been an annoying little kid on the team talking sports and stuff like that. So when I transitioned from playing it, talking about it. So that was kind of like my moment that day. Yeah. I turned a negative into a positive where it's parlayed into where I am today. So kind of like, yeah. y'all want to know, I don't know what's yours. You go for it. Uh, probably mine, one, one of none. Yeah. My one of none is, um, I don't know, I feel like I had a lot of stuff. I feel like the biggest thing that if I just sit down, I, what was kind of my mind was my last game at Georgia, national championship that we lost. Um, I feel like that's, that's kind of helped mold me into even what I am now because I, I was at Georgia, had a great four years, um, best time of my life, had some amazing games. But the one game where I was needed the most and I wasn't able to perform and win for my team and in a national championship. And I feel like just everything I've been through, all the good, all the bad, ended on a bad note and something I can never uh, change. So just what I learned from that is I know that now in big games, I want to be there for my team. I want to I want to make plays. I want to be the reason we win the game, you know, unselfishly. But for my teammates, I think that's the biggest thing that I took away from that moment just – when the time comes, like I keep saying, you gotta, you gotta make the plays. So. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was my, it was my junior year. We played Washington State, and yeah, I feel like just leading up to that moment, uh, I was just waiting on my 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 time to like get my my chance to shine, you know. And finally, that game I was able to got like. 300 some yards, like all purpose, three touchdowns, help my team come back. And mm. Like that, that <laughs> was like the glory. Wait, <laughs> now, that was like the crazy. <laughs> that was like my like, like after that, like I remember I went in the locker room, like and just started bawling my eyes out because I was like, I that's all I've been waiting for. Like, I was waiting for my moment. I finally got it, and like now I feel like I'm I'm back on track to make my dreams come true. You know, and so. Ever since that moment, I've just been trying to work hard and prove people wrong. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of fans want to know this, especially so when the season comes, we see y'all on Sundays and we see y'all getting ready for games and things like that. What's, what's a pregame ritual that, that, you, that you stick to, that you do before each game? We had uh, JLK uh, told us uh, Miles used to watch like the anime stuff, mm -hmm. like in the locker room or something like that. Um, but I guess that that's what get him that's what get yeah, him right. Yeah. What's uh, something yeah. that maybe like music? Is there a certain artist you listen to or some or uh, something that you love? For me, like one thing I always do, and I feel like a whole bunch of other like football players can relate to this, is watching Tavon Austin highlights <laughs> before the game. I still do that. Yeah. yeah. The college tapes. So watch yes, the college tape. I still watch that one. The Oakland Raiders, Oklahoma. You yeah. watch that one too? There's yeah. Like, like seven hundred all purpose. Crazy. Yeah. Like you know, that's like that's why I looked up to when mm -hmm. I was in uh, high school and stuff like that. That's the type of player I wanted to be in. So like, I still do that to this day. Watch those highlights. <laughs> Gotta turn on some like Drake, Gunna, stuff like that. Like, occupation. Occupation. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just listen to music. Just try to get yourself in that zone, you know? Like on the opposite, I don't like music. I don't like nothing. I just like just being like in the moment, I guess, just being aware of my surroundings. But I don't have like a superstition. I have like a routine, like I gotta get to the, uh, stadium at a certain time every every day every Sunday, I gotta get stretched at a certain time. I gotta get tapes. I gotta go out on the field. I gotta make my certain routes to make my catches and like I gotta. I have a great routine that I do before a game. A question we got is, what's, who's your favorite um, to go against at practice, whether it be linebacker, <laughs> DB, something like that? <laughs> yeah, the, this OTA so far, me and Jacob have been definitely getting some good work in. And it's just fun. Like, it's a fun competitiveness, you know. And then we, after practice, then we talking about, oh, like, just trying to help each other each other get better at it. Like, oh, what would you do on this? Or, like, what cover was y'all in? You know, and so it's just, that's the type of things you do, like, when you're on a team, you know, when you're just trying to help each other get better and whatnot. So that's mm -hmm. definitely been fun for me and him. Who, who's up on the one-on-one -on -one reps? I'm not going to talk crazy. <laughs> We we it's it's not it's just team reps. It's not it's not one. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> we'll do one on ones and when we come back and count. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, have, we'll have an answer for you, Dan. But my money on Demetri for sure. Thank you. He, <laughs> 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 who, you, who you like? Who you like? Uh, who you think give you the best like competition and practice? Whether it be like past past pro, uh, like one on ones, anything mm, like that. I don't know. I feel like I can't. I feel like I can give you answer as a, as a unit. I mean, out of out of the defense, the LB is probably the most most competitive. But they don't know how to practice. <laughs> yeah. they, they full speed and walk through. They yeah. slip and slide and everywhere. <laughs> Y'all bring the energy for sure, but I don't know about linebacker. They kind of they different they for sure. Extra. Yeah, they extra OD. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like I feel like Jacob. He's he's coming on. Jacob Phillips. He's he hasn't played. Um, shit, I don't know. It's been a while, but I, this year I, I can tell just the, the shift of mindset he's had. He's coming in, getting work with Dell. Dell, one of our trainers. He's you know he whatever you need. Dell. Dell from uh, Dell uh, Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was at Notre Dame. He was at Notre Dame. He was at Notre Dame. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was at Notre Dame. That's my guy. For yeah, sure. that's yeah. our guy. Like for real. <laughs> he, he, we need Dell, and he he would do work with Dell. He's been practicing hard. He's you know he got all like the little like tricks to to get you. Yeah, everything for sure. Like tell him this hurt. He gonna. I got some for yeah. you. Yeah, figure it out. So, what uh, what players do you guys look forward to seeing this year that um, that was drafted or just maybe signed to the team this year? And then, what what players are you gonna uh, or player are you gonna miss the most um, that's not with the team anymore? Uh, for me, I'm I'm looking forward to see what Perion got because <laughs> just based off his, his energy, all that barking, yeah, <laughs> it's just the energy he brings and whatnot. You know, I'm I'm excited to see see it and whatnot. Um, but I'm definitely the first person that came to mind for me is uh, Jarvis. I'm definitely gonna miss Juice on the most because I just loved his worth, work ethic, and his mindset, and I just love learning from him. You know, that's definitely someone that like I looked up to a lot uh, before coming into the league, mm-hmm. and so I'm definitely gonna miss him and what he brought to this team because he really was a pivotal uh, piece in changing the culture here, and that's what everybody says, and. Uh, we're definitely gonna miss that this year. Yeah, I, of course I gotta say Deshaun. I mean, I want to see what he gonna, what he gonna do. You know, he, he hasn't played. He didn't play last year, so yeah. trying, to, trying to see. I mean, he looks good in practice, yeah. and that's it's a, it's exciting to watch. So I'm, I'm him and Amara Cooper, I guess. Kind of see that. I want to see the chemistry connection they're gonna have. Help uh, help with the eight in the box a little bit to open yeah, up more yeah, op- yeah, open yeah. up more room for we, you. We need that. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I probably miss Jarvis the most too. That's my boy. I mean, Jarvis, he's he's a dog. I mean, he's a great person to be around. Great player. Uh, just a great dude. He brings energy. Mm-hmm. I mean, he brings uh, that dog, that fight. Like just how he prepares for the game, how he practices. For like Cleveland as a city, we'll, we'll miss Jarvis more mm-hmm. than we think we will. But that's part of the game. Yeah, maybe Jarvis is our ne- is our next guest on here. So oh yeah, we might need a we might need a referral or something to get him on here. But yeah. uh, I don't know what Jarvis you might get though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he might not hold back. Yeah. That's a day. Hey, that's the content we love. Yeah. <laughs> just going back to last year a little bit. Um, there was just I mean a lot of the, uh, a lot of just like locker room talk um, to whereas you had great players. But maybe they didn't mesh together. Um, what was the locker room like when I, I, uh, people talk about Odell a lot? And we've we've had a conversation with Greg and uh, JLK to where it's like they loved him in the locker room. He was a great leader, great great person to be around. Um, what was it like when he wasn't on the team anymore? Um, when he wasn't able just to, to when you weren't you didn't have that same energy in the locker room? Was it? Um, was it distracting or was it just like something you, I mean, obviously you had to get through it, but what was just the, the whole thing like in the locker room? I would say like, it was definitely like, it was definitely distracting. Cause like you go on your phone, you see a whole bunch of people talking about your team and then people asking you about it. And like, it's, I feel like it's tough for us because like a lot of things get misconstrued in the media. Like, like I was saying before, like they don't, they don't really know the true story or like how the guys were, you know. Odell was a really good dude. Baker was a really good dude to us. Like, they were never like in a locker room, you know, talking mess to each other or acting, you know, weird to each other. No, like everybody was there to win and, you know, get better. And in football, it's, it's not just one person to blame. There's multiple things that go into it. Right. You know, it's, a, it's a team sport. You know, every, 
you got to have the line. You got to have the good uh, play calls. You know, and then you need someone to make a play. There's so many things that go into it. And so I feel like for them to make it all about, you know, Odell and blame him and try to, like, uh, come at his character was wrong. You know, and, and it was – it sucked for us to see and for him to deal with ultimately. <laughs> How about you? Yeah, I feel like he said it. He yeah. hit right on the head. I mean – it was it was tough. It was it was tough to kind of. Um, I feel like we almost, we almost had to pick a side, you know. Yeah, it was weird. But Odell, Odell, my boy Baker's my boy, and I still talk to both of them all the time. I feel like it was just a disconnect. It just it just didn't work, you know. Mm-hmm. Both of them are great players. One, it wasn't one's fault. It wasn't other fault. It was just two great players that just it just wasn't there. You mm-hmm. know? So I think, um, but the media definitely going. Try to divide us and all this and all that, but it wasn't it wasn't what it seemed like it was. Last question: um, I'm sure you guys watched the Super Bowl and things of like that. What, what what's that like? Fire because all the time, like in college, when we watched the national championship, it, I mean, we played in the play. I played in the playoffs twice, and it was like it was a blowout both times. So it wasn't really like, oh damn, we supposed <laughs> to be there. <laughs> so it was like okay, like, we, it was like all right, we we came as far as we could. We got we. we it, didn't, it wasn't in our favor, but but it's. I mean, like I've always wanted that feeling of like winning winning the national championship, and it's like, dang, we was always one game away. But um, watching the Super Bowl this past year and just knowing like y'all got the y'all really got the talent, y'all got the coaches, um, you got the uh, the the foundation and all those things, the front office to to really to to get it done. Mm-hmm. What are um, some of the things that that y'all looking forward to uh, going into this year that are gonna help shift that? Mm. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's hard. It's hard to say this early, but I know that the fire in us just from watching the Bengals make it like mm-hmm. that, and then Odell made it, and it's like, why can't we make it? You know. Right. So I think just the fire of knowing that we can do it. I mean, we it's possible we can do it. I mean, we're in a tough division, but the Bengals came out of it, AOC champions. You feel me? So I think just the mindset, knowing we can do it, just got to work towards it every day. And just continue to work, get better every day. I mean, it's a long, it's a long season, long journey. We're gonna have our ups and downs. We're gonna have somebody in the media coming out saying we we're gonna lose a game. Somebody gonna say we we back to the old Browns, you know, and just ignoring that, keeping our head down, keep grinding, keep working, keep getting better every day. I know as a Browns fan, when we made the playoffs to, uh, a season ago, and then the atmosphere on the road had some guys out because of COVID, and then despite all that, y'all were able to bring the first playoff win in mm-hmm. nearly two decades to a city that you know, as y'all know. This is a Browns time before anything goes. Even when LeBron was here, this was still a Browns town. Talk about the feeling, what it was like to bring home that playoff win against a division rival. Yeah, that's probably the greatest moment I've had since I've been in Cleveland. Just finally getting that playoff win against a division rival. And not only that, I mean, we had COVID. COVID hit us bad. We had Lyman out. Our head, head coach, Kevin, we wasn't even the game. <laughs> and so I mean, it was just it was just tough. But I feel like, I feel like we kind of used that to fuel like, you know, our fire. To kind of go in there on the road and to win, and I mean, we all we everybody played great. We played our best game. I think first play of the game, snap over the head. Yeah, right? snap over the head. We got it for a touchdown, and I think I that. Remember that? Yeah, I, I think. Was was that? I think who got it? But I don't know. It might have been Larry or somebody. Pittsburgh playoff game. Yeah, it was one of the linemen hopped on it. So, yeah, I feel like that game was over. I mean, it was a momentum shift, and they, they, they didn't have their fans. It was COVID. Yeah. They had, like, couple, like 20,000 maybe, but yeah, that was probably my, one of my greatest moments on the team. Appreciate you guys coming on for sure. I mean, um, we definitely got to ask the fans, like, who, who, we should, who they want to see next, who we should try to get on next. Um, maybe even Jarvis. I, I mean – you said he got he got he got a lot to say, so maybe <laughs> maybe maybe we'll get him on. But um, again, thank you, uh, exhibition, for this dope layout. I mean, we got y'all got to pull up on West Twenty Fifth, uh, Cleveland, in, in Cleveland, Ohio. Come buy some shoes, come buy some clothes. Um, now nah, they definitely really took care of us today, so appreciate them for sure. We got the dog pound. We got uh, <laughs> we got Nick Chubb here. We got Demetri Felton, and then we got uh, my co-host Carl Jones. So appreciate you guys for tuning in. Make sure you uh, hit our YouTube channel at Varsity House Podcast. Subscribe um, all our social media accounts at Varsity House Podcast. Go follow those and just uh, stay up to date on all the content coming out. Um, appreciate it, and then let's go. We'll keep it rolling.